Is there any is there anything substantive to why you know she began mental prayer in 1538 and it took her 16 years before this conversion? Is it just go back to what you said before where she was just really not being consistent in, in her spiritual progress? Some of it had to do with a lack of consistency. Some of it had has to do with as you begin mental prayer, um, you come up against a threshold. Uh, prayer at first, there's a kind of sweetness to it, and you feel drawn to it. But it, but there's you also come against these thresholds where you have to um, uh, enter into experiences of prayer that are uncomfortable and inconvenient and unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. And um, and what and and for her, the specific thing we we discover after her conversion, if you read the life, you discover that the problem she had before her conversion continued afterwards. God's going to heal it. But the, the biggest thing that surprised her, and I think she was coming up against, is as she engaged mental prayer, she assumed that she was going to get morally better and better and better as she prayed. But as she engaged mental prayer at first, what first happens is uh, you become a lot more aware of your um, your sins and in your at least experience and in her case some people around her said you seem to be digressing rather than progressing in the spiritual life there must be something wrong and up until her conversion whenever she'd come across something like that she'd let it discourage her and she'd abandon the prayer after her com conversion this is where she's made the decision to uh, persevere with prayer and all the saints that she comes across after that whenever she is wondering should i continue because i seem to be getting worse they always encourage her to believe uh, basically they along the lines of to believe in the love and the mercy of god being communicated into her pr in her prayer to believe in that more than she believes in her own weaknesses and um and so, so that was the block, was, was when you see the reality of sin, as you pray, you see the reality of sin uh, in your life. And you see, uh, when you see that, it's discouraging. And, uh, and it takes a special grace of God to persevere in the face of your own uh, weakness and hostility towards him, to persevere in believing in love and to keep that commitment to prayer strong. It was during that time, too, I think, uh, if I remember right, the she recounts that the devil related to what you're saying about she is doing good in terms of um, pursuing the Lord, you know, even though there's some flex, there's some fluctuation in her commitment and discouragement or whatever, but the devil actually convinced her that she was too sinful to pray. Yep. Yep. And, and that, uh, Dan, it's so good that you brought that up because I think that happens to a lot of people. Uh, they get. They don't believe how much God loves them. They don't believe the the dignity of of um, of their lives and the great calling that they received. And so they 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 believe they're not worthy to pray, not worthy to allow God to love them. And and this was part of the the journey of her conversion. Yeah, and so so you know, sixteen years after she starts prayer fluctuating on and off, struggling. She also got some bad advice, bad spiritual direction. The devil convinced her not to, you know, to stop praying. But she learned a lot through that period, of course, and, you know, she reflects back a lot on that period uh, uh, in terms of this was the error and this is the truth. Because once, once after her conversion, she said, the one thing you should never, ever, ever stop doing is praying, right? That's right. That's right. She was pretty passionate about that. 